Hello friends, welcome to Knitography. I'm Patricia and I'm coming to you from my studio in the middle of Norway. Uh, today is vlog three of my new year vlogs. And um, if you have watched vlog one and two, then I guess you'll be prepared for my topic today, which is the wedding traditions uh, from Selbu. And this story is very much tied to the Selbu Valted, uh, the Selbu Mitten, uh, the traditional Selbu Mitten from this re region of which I live. Um, the whole idea of returning to this story and uh, reflecting back on my visit to the Selbu Valted Museum in uh, the village of Selbu, uh, I live on the other side of the lake from the village of Selbu. It's just a boat trip over. Uh, but I uh, just celebrated my 20th wedding anniversary. My husband is Norwegian. And uh, I just wanted to knit. Uh, yeah, just to be a part of that tradition. And uh, knit a pair of... Not not traditional Selbu Walter because I knit lots of those, but I just wanted to knit a whimsical pair of um, celebratory mittens in the style of the Selbu Walter, um that had our initials and the date, which you'll hear about in the story. Uh, and so it just uh, reminded me to return to the book, to return to the story, and uh, and then uh, people wanted to hear it again, and so I thought uh, that I would share it. So in vlog one or one and two, and also on my Instagram feed, you will find photos of the church in which I was married, and you can see my wedding dress, and yeah, I'll connect all of that into the story now as well. But if you're interested, you can go back and uh, and catch up on those. So in most uh, wedding traditions, you know, in the old days, it was the tradition, of course, to uh, sew the clothing for the wedding. But in Selbu, uh, it was knitting. Knitting was the tradition. And um, so when the bride uh, became engaged and she knew that she was going to be married, she needed to start... Uh, her knitting because she had quite a lot of knitting to do. Now I have my notes so forgive me if I'm looking down but I want to make sure that I don't forget any of these just wonderful details that I love so much. I have translated the story um, and uh, I wanted to make sure uh, that I that I tell you all the finer details of the story. So again if you have the Selbu Walter book um, you can mark page 18 because that is the story that I'm going to tell you. On page, page 18, it says wedding traditions. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that says. So um, the bride was in Selbu was responsible for knitting the groom's uh, Selbu Walter mittens. He was, she was responsible for knitting those and they needed to be extra complicated and they needed to uh, be an intricate design. So they were not everyday mittens. They needed to have, um, yeah, to look like I told you yesterday, they needed to be very stas mittens or celebratory mittens. And as I said, these mittens could often be uh, could be um, red and black rather than the traditional black and white. In the book, it tells you that on page 28, you can see a traditional pair of wedding mittens. So I'm going to show you those. And those are actually gloves. Um, so those were from 1872. And it has the the name of the bride and the groom the in the uh, connected to the picture picture. So the bride was responsible for that, and so she needed to start really early because, as you can imagine, it would take her a bit of time to do all of the um, knitting that she needed to do. Not only did it need to be an intricate design, it also needed to have. Uh, the groom, uh, the initials on it, and also the date 
of the uh, ceremony, the year, the year of the ceremony. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have our initials and the 20th, uh, uh, the 20th year anniversary date. So I was married in 1997 and I made the mittens in 2017. So weddings uh, in Selbu would last uh, for three days. And as I told you in the bridal loft, they would hang all of the mittens that I'm going to tell you about. So these mittens would be hung in the loft for the three days and then visitors would come in and look at it. And I think when I finish the story, you'll, you'll see why that would be quite amazing, this installation that they created in the loft. So this would have been a loft area and they would have made it into a bedroom for the wedding night of the bride and the groom. So this would be where they would spend their first wedded night together. Um, so not only did she need to knit uh, these mittens, she needed, she needed to knit all of the socks, the strumpid, and I talked to you about the strumpid when I talked to you about the uh, selbu sock that I knit. Now those strumpid for men are um, today in the uh, in the traditional costumes, they have stockings or socks. But it says in Selbu that they wore these socks under black suits, just regular black uh, men's suits. So she had to knit them for the father-in-law. She needed to knit them for the groom, of course. She needed to knit, knit them for all the brothers of the groom. And if he was a godfather to any of the children, uh, like when they're confirmated, he, she would need to knit them to those uh, children also. So just imagine she's knitting all of these socks and she's knitting these very intricate mittens and they're all going to be hung in the bridal loft. Now that's just one part of what would be hung there. But not only that, the bride was responsible for getting the fabric to her mother's uh, dress, the blouse, and she was uh, responsible for getting the fabric to the mother-in-law's uh, blouse. And the way that she paid for that was to exchange her knitting. So she would need to do some knitting to go down and to turn in her knitting to get the fabrics to make the blouses. So she's knitting all of these socks and she's knitting all of these mittens and she's also knitting uh, um, uh, knitted items and I would guess they would be uh, everyday selbivoted in exchange for the fabric to buy uh, the the um the blouse now all of the men that attended the wedding needed to leave with a pair of selbuvalted whether they were married or not they were going to leave with a pair of selbuvalted now the women that would attend the wedding were responsible for knitting these mittens that the men would go home to so if a man was married, of course, his wife would knit the mittens. But if a man was unmarried, then the unmarried guest would knit the mittens for them. Now, the women did not know who was going, the unmarried women did not know who was going to get their mittens. And I'm going to tell you about that very soon. So every man that attended the wedding would receive this pair of mittens and there are historical photos that show the bride and all of the men surrounding her and they're sitting there with the mittens there is one picture it's not so uh, easy to see in the book you can see it but in the museum there are many pictures of weddings that you can see where the bride is in the center and all the male guests are around her wearing their sedbu vaulters it's fantastic um yeah so when the women knit their mittens for um the their husband or they knit the mittens for the unmarried uh, men that were going to be at the wedding, 
they would, uh, the women would deliver them to the farm. So they would come to the farm and bring the pair of mittens that they've knit and that, that would be hung in the bridal loft. Now, along with that, they got a Volta gift. So they got a mitten gift to go along with it. And that could be a cup and a saucer. It could be a mug. It could be a plate or a platter. And so she would get um, a few of the items she needed to uh, make her home uh, with each delivery. And that's such a beautiful story because, you know, they would be mix-matched um, a little gifts and uh, you know it would be very practical in those days so every time a pair of mittens were delivered she would get a little teacup or a mug and I just think that's such a lovely story now the as I said uh, they would visit the uh, loft during the three days of the celebration. The wedding celebrations would last approximately three days. So during the three days, all of the guests and visitors would go up and they would see uh, the bedroom, the first place where they would sleep with this installation of mittens. Now, the, the book tells us that there could be 50 to 20 pairs of socks that she knit hung up in the loft. Okay, now remember the bride is knitting the socks. And the mittens, depending on the size of the wedding, there could be 80 to 100 pairs of selbuvalted hung in the loft for all to see. Now, the mittens that were knit by the women uh, for their husbands uh, were fancy. They were Stoss mittens, which I told you about uh, Stoss yesterday, extra special patterns. They weren't the everyday patterns. They're the most intricate of patterns. But the unmarried women, they really wanted to knit intricate patterns, special patterns. They wanted them to be complicated and beautiful because whoever got their mittens, the unmarried man, this could be a potential for them to show that they would be a good wife. Now, what I think is really funny is the bride had a, not only all of this knitting and getting married and all of that, she had the responsibility on the day for handing out the mittens. So she needed to be very careful uh, to give the married man the mitten that his wife knitted. And, uh, and if she did, made a mistake, then uh, the rumors and the gossip would go around that she was stupid. So she wanted to be very careful that she kept the overview of who knit what and who was getting what. Now... The fun thing about the unmarried men and the unmarried men's mittens is that she could make matches. So uh, there's a little question in the book that maybe she's a matchmaker. So she might say, you know, this girl she thinks would be a good match with this guy. And so she would give uh, him her mittens and there was potential there. I don't know if that's research <laughs> or scientific, but I love it. I think it's a amazing. Okay, so she had the potential uh, to uh, make that. So during the three days, they would come and uh, visit the bridal loft and uh, and see the mittens and they'd be handed out and then they'd be worn, I would suppose, during the ceremony and during the festivities after that. So that is the Selbu Valtard wedding tradition story. And uh, it's just, I just think it's absolutely uh, beautiful. And not only that, one way that we can see that this tradition has carried on is that today, if you're... Um, if you uh, love someone or you're like their boyfriend or girlfriend or maybe even engaged, it's very typical uh, to give your partner a pair of selbuvote. Now, what I, I just tell you a little personal story uh, that's connected to that. Um, I arrived in Norway um, 
really my first trip ever to Norway and I got off the plane and um and uh you have to drive into Trondheim and my husband took me up to this tower that's in Trondheim and at that time oh more than 20 years ago uh, it was a fish restaurant. It was a very, very fancy fish restaurant, and it and it rotates so you can see the whole of Trondheim uh, in in a I think it's an hour rotation, and so we're up there and we're having this beautiful fish meal and everything. And, uh, and as soon as we leave the restaurant, uh, we drive to the harbor and we get on the Hutti Ruta. And my husband takes me on this beautiful, at the time he was not my husband, but he takes me on this beautiful trip up the Hutti Ruta. And uh, we go all the way to the top and oh, it was uh, so romantic. And to this day we laugh because I tell him that's really the way that he kept me in Norway was the nature and I think he had a little tricky plan. But what was really beautiful was is at the fish restaurant on that day he gave me a pair of Sedbuvalter to have to wear on the boat. So it's a love gift. So it's even done today and uh, actually I, I have one of them but I've lost the other one. I lost it in... Um, Slovenia or Slovakia. I can't remember which one of those. I was there and I dropped it on the ground and I was absolutely frantic to try to find it. But I still have one of them. I photographed it on my Instagram feed. Uh, it's it's a beautiful one and, and maybe I'll show it tomorrow if there's interest. Now, the other thing was that yesterday I told you about the bridal uh, trunk, the bru, the schist, uh, schiste. And uh, so today I went by the museum and I asked a few questions and I found out that it is true. The bridal trunks that are shown in the Selby Museum are like hope, a hope chest that I uh, would know from my home. It was for the bride and oh, they are so beautiful. I, I'm looking so forward to show you Emma Grace's trunk. They're intricate painted, intricately painted in Rusamaling and um, inside her parents would have put a lot of the necessities that she needed to start her home. So I was actually right about that and it's easy to connect that and I could see it in the Selbuvato museum now today i didn't bring uh i didn't go in to uh, show you emma's trunk but of course i always myself wanted to be a part of that tradition and i was unable to bring my oak chest so i had a little um I had a little bride chest made for me when i got married now this is not anything uh you know, there were no gifts in it or anything like that. But um, while I was um, planning my wedding and everything, I kept my jewelry in here. I kept my invitations. Um, I kept a lot of the things as I was doing my wedding in this little schist or this little trunk. And I, I took everything out of it to um, bring it in and show you today. So it's here. This is my little bridal uh schist and it's just a miniature of the big one and you see it's well loved and used after so many years and this is the Rusamali. This is the exact same painting that you'll see on Emma Grace's but this is mine and I chose the uh, Trunde red color red or, or yeah red color and uh, Emma's I chose the green color and I had a little chair made for her in the blue so I have all the colors but this is my wedding trunk miniature it has my name on it and um, you open it up and it has the chirundir, the green color of the bunad these are all the bunad colors so this is the color of one of the bunads and the green is the color and it's just it is like this in Emma's too it's an exact replica of Emma's now the only difference with Emma's is that I had all of this sort of uh, hand hammered 
um, yeah, you know, the black hammered uh, hinges and everything. I went to a blacksmith and uh, when I was commissioning the, the uh, trunk to be made and then painted and I wanted hand hammered Viking all day looking hinges and uh, the key, hers has a key I had put in. So mine just lifts right up. There's not much fancy about it, but um, handmade with the beautiful te uh, texture on it. It has the schist sides that you can carry it. And also they were telling me at the museum that these were also used like suitcases. You could use them like uh, suitcases uh, after you got to your home. So traveling cases as well. So that's my bridal miniature uh, Brüde Schiste, and I love it so much. And right now, I keep um, I keep jewelry in it, and lots of little tokens uh, from when I was a young girl. So I'm just going to try to answer two questions, and uh, I want to thank you if you contacted me on Instagram, and you had a question yesterday. I was all wrapped up because I had been uh, shoveling snow, and someone. Uh, texted me and wanted to know which shawl I had on yesterday. Yesterday, I I realized in my video I had way too much clothes. I had on wool, I had on a sweater, I had on my jean jacket, and I was all wrapped up, um, and I really didn't think about it. So today, I got the heat going, and uh, yeah, I could take off some of the layers. But yesterday, I had on my butterfly friendship shawl. And uh, you might have seen Pia from Camabornia, which is really where I uh, uh, saw this shawl first. Um, she knit it, and this is a shawl by uh, Yarnesty on um, Instagram. And tomorrow, you know, I will try. Um, you'll find this on my feed. If you want to get the details, you'll find it on my feed. It's got little raised butterflies. This is a stunning, stunning pattern. First of all, the shape is amazing. I love the shape of it. And uh, I knit it in a BC Garn uh, Similia, I think. And I got it from uh, the Garn Boutique Fortuna. I got it from the yarn shop of the girl that designed these mittens. Um, and all of that information, you just scroll down, down, down in my Instagram and you'll see all of the photographs that I made wearing it and you'll find the hashtags and yeah, you can just do a little research to find it. But I, oh, I highly recommend this pattern. I love it so much. And what's really lovely about it is not only does it have the uh, butterfly motif, it has the little butterflies in the, the knitting. So this is the Butterfly Friendship Shawl, and I'm not really sure I'm getting that name exactly correct, but um, you look on my Instagram feed, and I had it on. I'm trying to think of what shawl I had on on the first vlog. I might not have had one on, but yeah. So that is the shawl I wore yesterday, and I'm in a real mood of rotating my shawls. Today I wore... My, today I wore my Isle of Purbeck. I often reach for this one, but I wore my Isle of Purbeck, and I told about that in another vlog, but I just highly, oh, I just love this shawl. So Isle of Purbeck I wore today. Butterfly shawl I wore yesterday, and I'll have to look back and see which one I had on the first one. Um, let me think. Yes, I wanted to tell you that I knit a lot of socks in the Christmas. I wanted to update you a little bit on the socks. I knit Emma Grace socks for Christmas, and I knit my son's socks, and I knit myself Christmas socks, and also I knit a pair of uh, rag socks for my husband for Christmas. So I gave everybody a pair of socks, and I typically do that. Um, I usually, I, I'm always making socks for myself, but I typically do that. Um, so I managed to give everybody a pair of handmade uh, socks for Christmas, and this was mine. 
Um, I have them on right now. <laughs> so I've been wearing them and wearing them. And I just want to tell you that one of my favorite sock yarns. Now, I don't really buy any more um, superwash yarn. And I'm really going to stop um, buying... Yes, I'm really going to stop even buying the superwash... Um, yeah everyday sock yarn. I'm going to really stick to sturdier yarns for my socks in the future. I mean, I have so much. Maybe I should show you my my yarn stash because it's overwhelming. I don't need to buy any more, but what I mean is I'm really 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 not going to be buying any more superwash yarns in future ever, I think. Um, I want to be intentional about my purchases. I want them to be from farms. I want them to be, I want, I want to know where they come from. And of course, this is all a part of your knitting journey. You know, in the beginning, I was all just whatever color and all of that. But I want to be very intentional with my purchases. And I have a lot of beautiful, um, beautiful I have a beautiful advent calendar from my friend who does dye um, colorful uh, super wash yarns for socks and things but I have a lot of that and uh, but really I want to be intentional about my purchases and be as local as I can um, but this yarn I have to say is by another crafty girl and her sock yarn if you are interested in color if you are interested in a very sturdy hard wearing super wash um beautifully aesthetic indie dyed and colored then i want to recommend another crafty girl i have knit so many and this was my first ever a spark was it my first no it might be my second ever sparkly socks and uh, I knit these for myself for Christmas and this colorway is called gamut and I it's one of my favorite colorways that she dyes so I have this leftover and I'm going to talk about leftovers in one of my vlogs in case uh yeah, anybody wants to connect with me, but I'll talk about that in a vlog later in the week. I have that on my list. So I knit lots of socks. Now, before I go today, hmm, let's see, was that what I wanted to share? Before I go today, I want to share a one last uh, thing with you that I'm going to tackle um, and I might, I can't remember if I've shared this in a vlog, but it doesn't matter. Um, I don't know if I told you, but I am knitting my first Norwegian kofta. And a kofta is a cardigan in Norwegian. They're very traditional. And uh, so I have my sleeves. I've got my sleeves ready to go. And I started my cardigan. And I realized that I had switched not only do I uh gaff up uh mitten thumbs I also switched the background color you see here is the yellow as the background color let's see is that correct no the white and then I switched them I think that's correct. Yes. Anyway, I, I, I messed it up. I was so discouraged that I stuck all of this in a basket and I put it right away. And I just, I don't know, it just really, a kofta is, you know, taking your knitting to the next level. So I have taken it out and I'm going to frog. And I want to thank everybody that tried to tell me that I should, um, you know, leave it as a design feature, but uh, this this kofta is all over, and it it would not look right. I think that would work for some koftas, but I'm gonna rip it out. I'm gonna rip back down, and I'm gonna start my kofta over again very soon. So, um, if there's any interest in the um, uh, traditions of the kofta, then you can send me some messages on uh, Instagram, and I will tell you. Now. 
some of the upcoming uh, vlogs that I'm going to do. I'm going to really, I've really gone through all of the history. Um, but what I really want to do is, and some one of the questions, the reason I'm mentioning this, one of the questions that I had on Instagram was uh, talking about uh, when I mentioned Emma Grace's uh, cuff. And they were talking about how uh, they have a small wrist and what do I do uh, with my cuffs. So I, I said that I would share that in a vlog and I will. And I wanted to tell how I'm going to do it. Because I'm going to break the Celebu Vaulted right down this week in my vlogs and in the coming days, in the coming vlogs. I'm going to talk to you about the cuff. And I'm going to talk to you about what's the difference between a woman's cuff and a man's cuff. Um, I'm going to talk to you about when you get up here um, and, and the gusset of the thumb and making the thumb and tips for the thumb. And I'll talk again about the um, the top of the mitten and the back of the mitten and the sides. I've decided that I'm going to break it right down because I get so many questions about that. Um, and yeah, so if you're flipping through your book, you see that they too break it right down. They just talk about thumbs and they, they break it right down. So I think that's something that I could, uh, you know, work towards and translate now and yeah, just bring up a com conversation about the top of the mitten, what are the techniques to uh, decrease for the top of a selbu vaulted, also what are the techniques to decrease for the top of a thumb, picking up the stitches for the thumb and also casting on again for the thumb and so many questions about how do you cast on in pattern and yes I have lots of tips and techniques. So if you're interested in that or if you have a very specific question uh, about knitting the Selbu Vaulte, then, um, uh, yeah, uh, then I would like for you just to contact me and with specific questions, and I will help you with that. So that is today's vlog. I want to get this uh, uh, uploaded, but before I go, I want to tell you that something so exciting for those of you that truly, truly love Selbu Walter is coming. I have been, um, since I visited the Selbu Walter Museum, working on a very special secret project. Um, something that I think, I hope, will be interesting to others. It's very interesting to me. And uh, I've been working through the process of this project for many months. And um, in the last week, I finally got it to the last stage. And I think on Sunday, I will have the last piece of the project uh, ready that I might could share. What's most amazing, I did a little teaser on Instagram because I was so excited. So if you want to know what I'm talking about, go to my Instagram feed and uh, you'll see a, a sort of a Selbu star there. And uh, you can have a little look at that. But it is a project that's coming right from my farm. So I'm very, very, very excited about it. Um... I'll tell you the story and hopefully there will be some interest and it won't just me that's uh, me that's be t will be excited about it. Um, so there's so much to share. I hope I haven't forgotten anything today. I hope you enjoyed the story of the wedding traditions and the bride and yeah that pretty much concludes my 20th uh, wedding anniversary stories and I think I will move on to other things. I'll share some more of my projects and uh, I want to thank you for joining me and for all of your feedback and remember if you want to contact me you can contact me on Instagram. If you see in the down bar you'll find the information you can contact me through Ravelry as well. I have a project page and I'll be putting the story uh, of this uh, project that I have going on there uh, in the days to come. 
I hope you have a wonderful evening or morning or afternoon wherever you are. And once again, thank you so much for joining me and all of your support. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, friends.